Hello everyone, if you clicked on this video, you're looking to do a POV inspection on your car. My name is David Roscoff and I'm an AAC certified Master Tech and prior Army active duty for six years with the 15J and 15E or Echo MOS. All right guys, so I wanna help you guys make sure that you do the best POV inspection for your soldiers or for yourself. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, the first thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be inspecting the tires. It is part of the DOD checklist that we found for the Army. So let's go ahead and look at the first thing. So the first thing we have is condition. One of the things you wanna know about tires is you wanna make sure you know the date of manufacture. A lot of people look at the condition and they look at how much meat is on the tire, essentially. But you also have to look at the year of the tire. And a good place to look is right here. This is the manufacturer's stamps code. So that's gonna be, let's see, that's the 35th week of 2018. So the tire has a good lifespan, about six years. So this tire is still within that range, but you really wanna look at the manufacturer date as well as the meat on the tire and the condition. Make sure it's not dry rotted, you know, there's not something cracking or there's any uh, uh, things that are, are loose or, or just anything that's that could potentially be bad. Look for nails, look for anything that could be uh, uh, bad to the tire. One of the things that a lot of people don't know either is that if there's any damage to the outside of the tire itself, it's not repairable, it has to be replaced. So let's go ahead and show you the penny to check the tire tread. So let's go ahead and show you how that works. First off, you need to use Lincoln's head. So you need to put it with his head facing the tire. And what you wanna do is you wanna see the tire cover up most of his head. Uh, but in reality, a lot of the tires, cause they're low profile, you at least wanna make sure that it covers his forehead. So let's go ahead and show you this with one of our cars. All right, so I'm gonna put it right there where the, where the, where the um, tread is at. As you can see, it covers all the way to his eyes. So that's pretty good. And it should be good, because this is a new tire and it's never been driven on the road. So you might have guys who have summer tires, but it's about to hit winter, they're about to go on leave. And essentially they're gonna be driving their summer tires in the winter. And that's not good because they're not gonna have the right performance and the right stopping power if they're using summer tires in winter. Some good information about that is when tires are, f summer tires pretty much don't work under 40 degrees. Not only that, if you go any lower than that, you could actually essentially crack the tire and it could be really bad. So make sure not only do you check, you know, the meat on the tire, but you also inspect um, what rating the tire is, if it's for summer, winter, or snow. So you also wanna check the spare tire. A lot of spare tires have been in the car for a long time. They could be expired, so you need to make sure that you look at that manufacturer date as well. You also wanna make sure that there's air in that tire. That's probably one of the biggest things that people miss is that needing air in your spare tire. And also make sure that that spare tire is secured. All right, so our next thing is gonna be headlights. Well, they're pretty self-explanatory, but if you really think about it, headlights have been evolving for a long time. You have HIDs, you have adaptive headlights, and you have your regular halogen headlights as well. One of the things you wanna make sure is that they're not cracked and that they essentially work, but also that they haven't been modified. A big thing with young guys and young soldiers is that they like to put those LED bulbs or some aftermarket HIDs on there, and sometimes the, the lights cannot be aligned, they're too bright, they're not a color that is really should be used like yellow or purple. So make sure that you check those, and if they are modified, you need to switch them out because those fancy lights usually don't work when you really need them to work, when it's really dark or it's foggy. So with this particular car, we're gonna go ahead and turn on the lights. So as you can tell, our lights on our GT4 are working and they look good. We're gonna check the high beam as well. And high beam look like it's working. Okay, now we're gonna test our brake lights. And they work. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check our turn signals. We're gonna do the left turn signal. And now we're gonna do the right turn signal. We're gonna look at the front. We're gonna do the right. And we're gonna do the left. Okay, now we're gonna try the hazards. 
we got the front hazards and let's go ahead and look at the back hazards Okay, we're also gonna look that make sure that the license plate lights are on. And it's kind of hard to see during the day, but they are. You can see the reflection right there. All right, we're done with the lights. Okay, let's go ahead and try out the backup lights. And they work. All right, we're now gonna look at the windshield. Hopefully my mic isn't catching all this wind, but the main thing you want to make sure that the windshield is good is that it doesn't have any major cracks. One of the good things to know is that, especially here in Colorado, when you do get a crack, you need to make sure that you inspect it right away because cracks get bigger with a difference in temperature. So let's say you get a crack in the heat, but then you go into the cold and then you go to in the heat, essentially the crack is going to expand. So if you do get a crack or if your soldier does get a crack, you want to make sure you address it right away. So if you get a crack during, uh, during your leave or something like that, don't wait for it to, to look at it later on or get it looked at. You want to get it looked at right away. And windshield replacement can be a lot harder with the supply issue that's going on here in 2020 too. So just make sure that you're aware of those issues with the windshield. All right, one of the big things with you soldiers, which I love, I was one of those, is tent. Tent is really good. So you want to make sure that your tent isn't limo tent. Every state varies. So you as a supervisor, as an NCO, you need to make sure that you know those laws. You might not have a tent meter, but you could pretty much tell if there's 0% tent on your soldier's car. Save him from getting in trouble or getting a ticket. So make sure that you help him and you address that. And you want to make sure that you look at all your windows, your rear window, their side mirrors, your windows for your drivers and passenger sides. And you want to make sure that you just cycle them, go down and go up and just make sure they all work. All right, so you want to make sure the windshield wipers are good. Best way to check them out is by turning them on, by uh, you know just making sure that you cycle them. I'm not gonna do this on my car right now because I got a lot of bugs and this car is pretty new, but essentially you just wanna make sure you operate them. Use some common sense. You army soldiers out there are smart, so we're not gonna harp on the common sense stuff. But if you need to replace your windshield wipers, it's pretty easy to tell if they're cracked or they make a noise when they're going up and down, you pretty much have to replace them. Again, I'm gonna talk realistically. When I was a soldier, I bought all kinds of project cars and all kinds of crazy cars. And these mirror things are a big thing. <laughs> you need to make sure your soldiers do have side mirrors and that they actually have a rear view mirror because that's one of those things that uh, can be missing. So just make sure you look at those common sense things. All right, so let's go ahead and move into bumpers. Well, just want to make sure you have a front bumper. The crazy part is, is that at one point in time, I didn't have a front bumper because I wanted to be really cool. I just wanted an intercooler to show, but that is not within regulation. So make sure that your soldiers have a bumper. Make sure that it's on there. That's not on there with zip ties or anything like that. And make sure that there's no issues with it. If the car looks like it came from the factory, then you could pretty much use common sense. But if your soldier is modifying or doing anything crazy, you want to take the time to make sure that it's installed correctly. Same thing goes with the bumper, the rear bumper. And when it comes to the brakes, it's a very broad subject, but if you just want to inspect the brake pedal, you know, you want to check out your soldier's car and uh, also ask him if he has any issues with braking, but essentially you want a firm pedal. With the ignition off, you're going to want to have a firm pedal, but with the car on, you're going to act, be activating the vacuum system and the brake booster. So you just want to make sure that that pedal doesn't hit the ground and that it's firm and that it's not spongy. If any of those things uh, are happening, like if you have a pedal that goes all the way down or you have spongy brakes, then you, it's definitely one of the biggest safety issues and you definitely want to have your soldier go get that checked out. In today's world, we have a lot of technology that's changing. On this GT4, it has an electronic brake, so you really can only check it by activating it and deactivating it. But if you have a handbrake, make sure that you put it on there, you know, gently push the car and see if it moves. Essentially, hopefully the e-brake still works because it's very crucial. All right, guys, we're going to talk about the horn. There we go. We have our horn that works. All right, defrost front and defrost rear. Now, like I said, you have to know your environment and you have to know your temperatures and what's going on. If you're in the summer, you're probably going to want to avoid it, but just make sure that it works. If your soldier doesn't know how to use defrost, fastest way to defrost the windshield. One, turn heater all the way up. Two, turn on AC, outside air, not recirculating. Three, turn fan all the way up. Four, set air to windshield defrost. Five, 
crack window open. But essentially you want to make sure that blower kicks on and that the modes change. As far as seat belts go, you just want to go ahead and check it. Make sure that it retracts out, that it locks in, and that it stays locked in. You want to make sure that there's no frays or cuts or anything that could actually damage it. In some vehicles, when you put the key in and you start, you could actually test it and make sure that it actually locks in there. But it varies vehicle to vehicle on that. So this portion is going to simulate like the person's or the owner of the vehicle that you're inspecting documentation because I'm not going to show mine in camera and we're going to keep that private. But essentially you want to look at their registration, their insurance, and anything else that's associated with the local state or government requirements. And you just want to make sure that it's up to date, that it's correct, and that it actually is, uh, has the name of the soldier that's registered to the vehicle and blah, blah, blah. So common sense stuff, but you wanna make sure that you go through that stuff and you look at that and just make sure you do your due diligence as a supervisor to make sure everything's in order. All right, so in the inspection sheet, it talks about looking at some stuff in the engine bay. What you really wanna look for is just anything out of the obvious. Like if something's leaking, if you see fluid. So essentially, if you see green or blue or even red, that might be coolant. So you wanna check around the hose areas like this. You know, you just wanna make sure that you don't see anything that's very obvious. That's like, hey, you know, I see a leak, I see something's torn. Typically, if a car is running well um, and you don't see anything that's out of the ordinary, that's pretty much gonna be in your inspection. So you're just doing a quick visual inspection over the engine. Most engines do have engine covers, so you really won't be able to see a lot. So this part of the inspection is just a very quick, let's look at stuff, make sure that things you know, look well. You can look at fluids, you could check your oil, you could check your brake fluid, you could even check the air filter. Uh, but as far as doing anything more than that, it's gonna be out of the field of the typical person. And you need to let a professional look at that because you can actually mess something up, especially with today's vehicles. So even though emergency equipment is considered optional in the inspection, I think it's very, very important, especially depending on the seasons. If you're gonna be hitting the winter, you wanna make sure you have shovels, you wanna make sure you have a blanket, and essentially a winter emergency kit. Also, if you're doing long distances, you wanna have tire repair kits, you wanna have a first aid kit like this. It's really good to have this stuff, so I highly recommend to buy some stuff. There's all kinds of things on Amazon, but this is a very smart idea to have. All right, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope the extra tips will help keep you and your soldiers safe. And like always, we appreciate what you guys do. Thank you for your service. It's been an honor to serve myself, and we thank you for watching this video. You guys take care, and we will see you soon.